This video is brought to you by the Edinburgh Watch Company, who specialise in the buying and selling of fine Swiss luxury watches in the beautiful city of Edinburgh and online at edinburghwatchcompany.co.uk. Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week's watch is something that I never thought I would own or wear, a solid gold Rolex. I always thought something like this would be far too gaudy, too opulent, too blingy for my, let's face it, pale complexion. But this 2021 model is something else. It's instantly become one of my favorites. And this week, I'm gonna tell you why, and also why it's not the only solid gold watch in my collection. This week, it's all about solid gold Rolexes, and in particular, this one which has quickly become one of the favorites in my collection. This is the 2021 full 18 karat gold, 41 millimeter black dial Submariner. It's got the Cerachrome bezel and the reference number is 126618LN. And for fans of my French pronunciation, LN stands for Lunette Noire, black dial. This is the very latest from Rolex, and I never thought I would lust after something like this. Mainly because, being a pasty Caucasian, I never thought I could pull off the solid gold look. Turns out that thanks to the particular hue of Rolex's own forged gold from its own exclusive foundry, it looks fantastic on the wrist, and I am a new convert to gold watches. So this week I'm going to talk about this watch in detail, I'm going to go through the history of the Submariner, the full unboxing, why I love it, and of course, the buying story. And I'm also gonna to touch on some of the other gold beauties now in my collection. And if you want a full episode on all my solid gold watches, let me know in the comments. Before we get started and fully into this episode, a quick wristwatch check. And under the blue jumper this week, I have the Rolex Milgauss, reference number 116400. It's a 2011 watch, it's got a 40 millimeter case, black dial, orange lightning hand and indices, and the 3135 movement, and perhaps that is significant if rumours are to be believed. I've always been a fan of the somewhat ignored Milgauss, and I've got the white dial with orange hour markers as well as this black dial, and hopefully I've got another one on the way. But this week's watch is the solid gold Rolex Submariner with the black dial that I'm holding right now. On close inspection you'll see many scratches on the bracelet because, of course, this is no safe queen. Now I've never been a fan of the solid gold blue dial Rolex Submariner. That's always been a bit too yachty for me, a bit car salesman, a bit gauche, but the black dial is a different story. When I see a full yellow gold Submariner with a black dial, two things spring to mind. Number one, Scott Disick, and number two, Sylvester Stallone. In fact, my nickname for this watch is the Stallone. This is because in the excellent A Man and His Watch book, Matt Horanek interviewed Stallone about his treasured vintage black nipple dial Submariner, which had Tiffany branding. And as soon as I saw it, as you are right now, I became obsessed with it. And now let's go through the history of the Submariner and where this watch fits in the current range. The Submariner was created in 1953, and it was the brainchild of Rolex's Director of Development of New Models, René Paul Genevet. The guy was a complete dude. He came up with many of the iconic marketing campaigns for Rolex. He was a close personal friend of Hans Wildorf, the founder. He also created the Cellini line and many of Rolex's most historic models. Genevay was a keen diver, but he was also best mates with a fellow that you might have heard of, Jacques Cousteau, the famous scuba and skin diver who made diving super popular in the 50s. Diving suddenly became uber cool and it was heartily embraced by upwardly mobile men. Many companies targeted diving as a cool sport. It was Genevieve's friendship with Cousteau that led to discussions about a tool watch for diving called the Submariner. Something accurate, something that could cope with depth without compromising the integrity of the case, and many believe that Cousteau tested those early prototypes. In 1954, the Submariner was officially launched at the Basel Watch Fair. It was water resistant to 100 meters, and it had a 38 millimeter oyster steel case to prevent water ingress at depth. 
And crucially, it had a new innovation, which was the rotating bezel. It could only rotate one way to prevent mistakes underwater, so it was an incredibly useful, life-saving feature. And of course, since the launch of the Submariner, it has been the stalwart of Rolex's line and one of its most iconic and enduring models. And in August 2020, Rolex updated the whole Submariner range with a new 3230 no-date movement and 3235 date movement. They also upped the power reserve to 70 hours and increased the case to 41 millimeters. And this is the current Submariner range. As you can see, you've got the no date and date steel with black dial, the new Starbucks with the green bezel replacing the Hulk, the two-tone steel and gold with the blue and black bezel, white gold with the blue bezel replacing the Smurf, and the two full yellow golds, blue dial and black dial. And now it's time for Unboxo Vision. So let's go through the full unboxing of this Rolex Submariner in yellow gold. Now obviously it's a Rolex and therefore it's not going to be spectacularly different to many others that you've seen on the channel. There's the receipt there from Lengs and inside we have the standard green plastic box with the Rolex logo and ruche leather effect. Inside there it is sat on the cushion you can see as standard I'm keeping the tags there to make sure that I've got everything together with the watch It's part of my OCD. Uh, there's the watch itself, as you can see, paid just under £30,000 for it. In the secret compartment, we've got the manual, the Oyster Perpetual Submariner manual, which tells you exactly how to operate this watch in great detail and in multiple languages. There is the new format guarantee cards, which are now kind of like a credit card. And on the flip side, the service manual. And there it is, the watch itself sitting on its cushion, one of my current Rolex favourites. So what is it about this watch that really grabbed me by the short and curlies? Well, it has to be the combination of that specially forged, slightly duller, more beautiful Rolex gold with the black dial. It just bowls me over every time I wear it. There's also something particularly decadent about a dive watch that you would never consider wearing whilst diving. Yes, it's a maxi dial, but the way that the hour markers are ringed with 18 karat gold makes them glisten in the sunlight and the Cerachrome bezel with gold graduations has an unusual finish, which means it's not jet black, and therefore it doesn't contrast as much with the gold case. The new longer 70 hour power reserve, which means you can take the watch off and not really worry about it for a few days. And the glide lock extension on the bracelet means it's very easy to get the right fit. And because it's solid gold, it's reassuringly weighty, but with that black dial, surprisingly, it's actually quite a subtle watch to wear every day. The only real downsides to ownership of this watch are the fact that you can scratch the bracelet quite easily, that gold does mark with thin scratches, and the fact that I've found that the actual crown has unscrewed a couple of times and popped open. I don't really know what I'm doing wrong. Perhaps on these modern Rolexes, you need to screw it in a lot tighter than the previous generation, but for whatever reason, it's popped out twice when I least expected it. And we all know how embarrassing that can be. I am actually quite surprised how much I've really fallen for this watch. I didn't think I was going to, but it just feels really right. On the wrist it looks good, it's showy but it's not too showy and the level of detail, the luster that you get off the strap and the case from that Rolex gold just works really well and the combination of the black and the gold it's really working for me I have to say. And really this watch is part of the revival of solid gold in my collection. I never really saw myself as a full gold watch wearing sort of person, but I have managed to acquire various pieces over the years. And I have to confess, I've maybe not worn them as much as I could have done. And perhaps I just didn't feel comfortable about wearing them out in public. However, this watch has really revitalized my love for solid gold. And it means like watches like this, for example, or perhaps this, this Beta 21, and of course my green dial yellow gold Daytona. It does actually mean that I'm wearing them a lot more and appreciating them a lot more than I did before. So what's the buying story of this watch? Well, no surprise, it's part of my long-standing relationship with Langs in Southampton. A dealer that I built up a trusted relationship with and therefore I'm able to secure most of the pieces that I'm looking for. I explained my fascination with this watch with my dealer, put my name forward to get one, and then it was just a case of waiting. In the end, because it's the more precious and expensive precious metal version rather than the steel sports watches, it actually arrived quicker than I thought, about three months later. How did I get the very latest Rolex Submariner, I hear you ask? 
Well, it comes down to the lessons that I put in one of my earlier episodes, talking about how you get the ungettable Rolexes. In my case, because I've developed a long-term relationship with my authorized dealer, I kept them in form of the watches I was looking for. I've got a varied collection. I'm not flipping any of the watches, and also, more importantly, I really enjoy and wear the watches. That makes a big difference. So there you are. This is the Rolex Submariner in solid 18 karat gold. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you found it interesting. If you like what I'm doing on the watch guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. I read them all and I respond to many of them. There'll be another watch guys episode along next week.